All right, we're trying live again. So it says chat works, no video. Can you hear me now? Can you guys, can you hear me? This is Glow Trotting with Trey. Hopefully my audio is picking up this time. Let us know. What are they saying? Oh my God. We've already got some moron in here. Well, unfortunately, they do exist. Can you hear both of us, Mika? They said they can't. I can hear it. Okay. What are they saying? Oh, my God. Is it better? Yeah, they said they can hear us. Okay. Woo! This was a, uh, uh, that's the reason we didn't tell anybody that we were going to try to go live because um, we didn't know if we could make this thing happen or not, uh, both of us on one screen. They don't have that ability on Facebook or on YouTube, I should say, yet. And uh, so we didn't want to tell anybody until we were able to do it. And uh, Captain Ray, somebody blocked this clown, whoever this is. Captain Ray. Yeah, Captain Ray. I'm sure that's your name, Captain Ray. What's your real name, Captain Ray? Captain that's Loser true. is his real name. I'm not going to say about <laughs> the real names. <laughs> uh, can you moderate? Is there somebody able to moderate? Yeah, uh, somebody can moderate this stuff. They can like go on and delete things. And okay, well, moderate yeah. away, my friend. Because you know how you are, Billy. You'll be blocking people left and right, right? Yeah, hey. My block list is thousands long, and um, so good. Miko, did you take care of it? Thank you. So somebody said, Halls, Auto Body, and Paints. Pretty cool name. Hey, guys, just watching you both on YouTube, on TV, on the UK now. In UK. So, Wonderful. UK, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Go try to portray the spa guy in UK. <laughs> I like it. I like to see yeah. that. So, guys, if y'all have any uh, any questions, we would gladly answer them. We're not going to stay on long. We want to start trying to do a few things like this. This is an easy way to communicate, but the issue is, is this took a long time to get this going, and I don't think it's very reliable is the thing that I'm afraid of. And uh, so we want to make sure that we're doing what, you know, we want to do quality stuff every time that, that we do stuff. As good a quality as, Matt as Jay, we can. Matt J just sent you five bucks, Billy. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate Thank you, you my Matt, friend. To hear from you guys, love your videos. Matt J, I appreciate you, man. Wow. So there's Captain Ray again. He's already bumped back in. Captain Ray, Elvis would be disappointed right. in both of you. Yeah, I'm so Captain this is Ray. a good question. So okay, Elvis would be Ray, disappointed in us because we're making Elvis videos and uncovering yeah. history and proving that some people say things that are not accurate and he would not yeah. like that? Hmm. He doing work, Billy, because I think Elvis would enjoy what you're doing, man. <laughs> I mean, every week, you've been doing this for six years. Every week you brought an episode about Elvis to, to people all around this world. I mean, the guy was watching us in the UK. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. That's what love. Man, it's, no doubt. I don't care what uh, Captain Ray or Ray Captain or whoever you think you are. Yeah, Captain Rahab. And, um, but we've been doing this, Trey and I have been working on this for years. All right. Somebody asked a good question. Who is this cup guy that's bad mouthing me on YouTube? All right. So I'll just give you the, um, the, the basics of that. That's a great question. So the cup guy is, um, a guy that went to, from what I gather from, from what I think it is, he went to an Elvis concert as a kid and he saw Elvis drinking out of a styrofoam cup, which I don't remember Elvis drinking out of styrofoam cups. I remember him drinking out of the, the wax covered Coke cups. You remember that? Um, and he, his claim to fame is he found this cup and he actually sold the cup and then he sold the water that was in the cup to several different people. And then he miraculously found a, uh, a record that was supposedly on Jailhouse Rock. 
in Los Angeles at a record store, which is pretty miraculous. And then on top of that, he um, claims that I used his photograph that he owns and has a copyright to, which is the, the famous photograph of Elvis on the bicycle. In fact, I'll pull it up real quick uh, so you can see the photograph that we're talking about. There's only two Elvis bicycle pictures with the original bicycle. And one of them is uh, this one right here. So it is that right there. If you look, that's the, the Elvis bicycle picture that he claims he owns. So there's a problem with claiming that he owns that. And the other bicycle picture is this one right here. This picture actually happened in Tupelo. That happened at 1010 North Green. The other picture that I showed you happened on Poplar. So he actually appeared in a magazine, uh, Vanity Fair, with Alana Nash, which wrote some, some Elvis books. Um, and Alana Nash is mad at me, too. <laughs> She's just had to join the list of people. Um, and in the Vanity Fair article, they say that that photograph first happened in Tupelo. Second, they say that the... He says that he does not know who took the picture. That's key. He also says that he sold the photograph to someone in the UK, mentioning UK, um, on eBay. So there's several problems with having a copyright to a picture. First, you have to, in order to own a copyright to a photograph, which very few Elvis photographs are copyrighted, that were taken by individuals because unless you went out and got the copyright right then, most likely it's gone into the public domain. In order to have a copyright for a photograph, you have to be the one that pushes the button on the camera. Um, I know he looks old, but he does not look old enough to have taken that picture in 1948 or 1949. So we know he didn't take the picture. We know he does not know who the person that took the picture is. He says it in the magazine article. So just on those two factors alone, you cannot own the copyright to a photograph. Also, he's never produced any paperwork. So yeah. his story that he owns the copyright and I've stolen it and I should have paid him and all that is a complete, <clears throat> sorry, uh, Wade, but that's the bottom line. You don't own Jack. What you own is a make-believe story that you wish that you owned something, um, but you just don't. And we're at a time now, guys, uh, friends, where people are literally grasping at straws. They're trying to find anything on Trey and I that, um, that they think that they can use against us. You know why? Because they can't find anything. And I didn't see that. Some, something just went by right there. Uh, Miss Happy Apple, thank you so much. That was very sweet. And look, guys, I didn't go live for y'all to send this money, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, but that was not... Um, Did you say what she read? She said, just keep being honest. That means you're scrolling up on me. I'm trying to read this. Honesty thing. is important. And I agree, Stacy Stein, that Atlanta yeah. Ash does not like to be wrong. Um, Miss Happy, Miss Happy, Miss Happy Apple, who sent fifty bucks. Wow, she said, "Just keep being honest. That means the most. It's all about truth." Kudos to you. We love y'all. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. And it's Gary, nice. the ambulance yeah. is safe, my friend. It is inside a place, inside of a building, safe where um, where nothing can happen to it. I promise promise you that uh, that it is good. And I don't have an issue with Lana Nash, but I know that she has an issue with me. I, I said something yeah. about where she, in her book that she wrote about the colonel, she wrote the story that the colonel was involved in that murder in Breda uh, in the Netherlands. And yeah. I went to Breda, and the people there were exactly, and those guitars are right-handed guitars, Bart. They're not left-handed. I think maybe it's tur turned it around, but these are all my... Uh, these are some of my, my axes, if you will. This is a, a custom shop Telecaster Fender 2004 model, one of only 30 made. And that's a USA model uh, Telecaster Blue. This is my favorite guitar while we're talking about guitars. This is my, my USA Strat Plus Deluxe. And I had hot pickups put in it and all that kind of stuff. And it actually wears a bra, too. That's what this is, so it doesn't get scratched up. But I'm in my studio down uh, in, in my home. 
Um, and uh, Trey's idea, please contact Netflix. We are planning on doing a Netflix documentary uh, on this <laughs> on this whole thing. We've already started writing it, and we have cameras good enough. In order to do a Netflix documentary, you just we can't. All of our stuff is now filmed in 1080. In order to do Netflix, they require 4K plus codes and all kind of stuff. Yeah, all these different things that you've got to have. So we're working on those things. I've got a new camera. Uh, we've got, we, let's just say this, we've got cameras that are capable of doing this. And so that's the next thing that we're working on. I think the image is reversed, uh, Pierre 5220. I'm assuming you may be a, a Rush fan. I played, I was Getty in a Rush cover band. Go ahead, Trey. Yeah, the image, let's see. That's my right hand. Okay, so this is my right hand. So that's what they're saying. Okay, yeah. so maybe it's turned it around. All right. I don't know. But the story yeah. in Alana Nash's book, let me just say this real quick, is the story in Alana's book, um, she basically was, was she didn't, I'm not saying that she went there and investigated and found that. She was telling a story that someone else in the Netherlands told in a magazine. And she uh, went with the story. And, you know, look, I don't, it's, it's kind of what Trey and I do. There's things that we tell you that we don't necessarily believe are true. Um, but, and what I mean is I, I let people tell stories. If I have someone that is, that I've interviewed that I know that they're just, everything that they've said is not factual, you will never see that video. But there's things that I know that someone said in a video, but what I can't start doing is calling people out because then what happens is people that you want to interview won't do it because they go, well, I know how you treated such and such. Uh, so so I'm, I'm not going to do the interview. So we, I have to balance that. Um, that doesn't mean that you're never going to hear someone say something on one of my interviews that I believe is not true because, I, like I say, I can't call everybody out on everything. And some things you can't prove or disprove. disprove. Um, so it's, it's one of those things. And someone asked me, how can you lock someone out of a business that you're 50 percent owner of, that's a good question. and that's right. that's a great question and guys yeah. we're in the middle of of litigation so i can't get too detailed on any of this um but that's a fair question and the answer is i think a lot of people are trying to say that i'm not a 50 percent owner and i think that that's where a lot of people are trying to go with that but i beg to differ i am a 50 percent owner in that business that's not even up for debate. Um, but let's just say this, cut there, hold your thought. If you're not a 50% owner, how in the world did we go to Elvis Week and have our events inside your dojo? I mean, the dojo. Um. Well, that's a good point. If if I didn't have <laughs> some ownership, we would not have been allowed inside the building. You're right. We wouldn't even been inside the building because you know what happened when we went inside the building at one point. Yeah, before. we had a little issue when we went in. One, You know, we went in several times uh, yeah. because we were trying, you know, we were doing bus tours and stuff and we're there to greet the next, the next people. But I don't, I don't want to get into that too much today, but the answer right. is someone locks you out of your business by simply changing the locks, which is illegal. Um, that doesn't mean that, that I could, I mean, what I'm trying to, what I'm doing here is I'm not giving them any ammunition none so you remember when i did the video about the 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 movie where i promised days ahead that and and look that was a bold move and i'll tell you why um because i hadn't filmed those things yet i just knew that i could so when i promised an avalanche of evidence that time um I was able to, I feel like I was able to deliver on an avalanche of evidence, but I can tell you this, if I delivered an avalanche of evidence on the, on that movie, I can deliver you uh, an atomic, a nuclear bomb of evidence uh, on this little situation that we have um, uh, here. In my case, it is an LLC. 
Um, and yeah, Gary, like I, I you like the work I did at the dojo. Thank you, my friend. It was it was a lot of fun. And Blake Masterson, uh, some cut dude saying that I put in thirty thousand, other old put in five hundred thousand. That is not entirely factual, and I cannot get into the details of that. And the reason is, is those details are actually uh, would be considered trade secrets for, for lack of a better word. There's things that you do inside of a business that are not meant to be in the public domain. So if they get in the public domain, that is, again, something else that's illegal um, first, and especially if they get into the public domain and they're not true. So what happens is a person would use something that they would go into the public domain. And when I'm saying public domain, I'm saying they would say these things to uh, employees, to customers, to different people to try to get an unfair advantage is the way the courts would look at it. And when you do those kinds of things and you do obtain an, an unfair advantage where you make it where employees believe these things that they believe that this has happened and that's happening. And no, I did not get to meet Jerry Schiff. Uh, I've talked to Jerry, but I've never met him. Um, but when people believe those things, then they start believing that, that this person does have uh, something that, they, that the other person doesn't have, which in business creates what the courts would look at as an unfair advantage, which is a breach. Uh, all these things are breaches, and I don't. I'm not going to go any further than what I just said. But just awesome. know that the number of breaches um, are up in the hundreds now. I'll say. I'll. I'll say that, and I'll stop. So let me see what else. Yes, the video is very clear and evidence right there with the interviews. Thank you, Miss Happy Apple. I, you know, guys, I try to make these things as. Um, and it's saying I wouldn't say a word about the LLC. I didn't say anything that was that's not public knowledge. So and nothing that's not true. So I, it's very best fun. I spent. I did get assaulted. Yeah, yeah. You got assaulted. Now I didn't get assaulted to the level that Trey did, but both of us were assaulted physically. Um, yeah, so much wrong in the new Elvis movie. Yes, Gary. <laughs> Gary, I think you're being uh, you're being nice by saying so much wrong. I watched the movie one time, guys, and I have no desire to ever watch ever watch it again. I just don't care. Yeah, I don't care. The and movie. I guess that because I'm a fan of Elvis. So the movie um, was. Not even close to factual. Someone asked me if I had an, an attorney. Um, I'll just say this. I know someone, and I call him Godzilla. And Godzilla's heading to Tokyo. And I'll leave it at that. Well, I'm just going to say this, because, you know, I've been a part of this whole stuff since the end of April. And of course, you know, Billy, since I'm your friend and since I stand up for you, you know, people are mad at me, mean to me and attack me, call me names. Um, people won't do interviews with me because of you, Billy. I mean, you mentioned one lady earlier in, yeah. the, in this episode. I, I, uh, I uh, sent her a message to talk about the colonel and she brought you up so she wouldn't do an interview with me. So he's saying Lana Nash. I'll yeah, say it, Trey. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but... Uh, um, well, I mean, I mean and, while we're, I mean, look, guys, we just believe in being truthful. I don't have a thing in the world to hide. Nothing. Okay. I've been a part of this since April the 30th, and um, I've been, you know, I, I've been with you along the way and seen you be locked out of your building and the things that are happening, the things that have been said to me, and, you know, I, I don't appreciate it at all not with all the work that i did uh, i created the facebook page the tiger man karate dojo and museum everything guys that you have that you watched on facebook all the promotional advertisements all the commercials i created i spent my own time on my computer uh, when i sh could have been doing stuff for all my other clients that paid me money that's what and, you do for uh, a living 
Yeah, that's what I do. I have a, a business where I do social media video market, marketing, and I every month I create promotional advertisements every week for Facebook and social media accounts, and then I create commercials for my businesses as well. Since I'm a filmmaker, as you guys see on YouTube, but uh, but yeah, I uh, you know I did all that because. I cared about the Tiger Man, and I wanted the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum to succeed. I mean, Billy, you guys had something awesome, man. man we had built it up, and you know, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about everybody. Everybody that was involved in this process, we were a team. We were friends. All of these people that are mad at, at you now, mad at me, we were, they were our friends. At least I thought they were, uh, but unfortunately, you know, uh, but... It's just a sad situation, and uh, the bottom line is I just don't think people can do things that have happened in the past three months and without consequences. But, of course, it has to be legally, and that takes time. Yeah, and people are asking, um, first, if you're my son. <laughs> I have a son named Trey, but this is not my son. This is my friend Trey. Trey is slightly older than my son. He's uh, 35. My son is 32. Um, let's see. The biggest issue with Dojo is that you should have been 51% older. Your dream, your vision. Yeah, and and you know, hindsight's 2020, guys. But I actually, there's, I, I, I can't tell you anymore. I'm so sorry. But there's, there's <laughs> one of these days, y'all are going to learn the whole story that's going to blow your mind. But I will say, I, let me say this. I normally start these with praying. So let's, let's go back and take care of that right now. I'm going to pray for all of you, and I'm going to pray for this whole situation. And so let's pray right now. Lord, I thank you today, and I ask you to touch all the people that are supporting us, and even the people that are not supporting us. Uh, I ask you to touch and prick those people's hearts, even the people that are against us, Patrick, Joey, Gabby, Billy, Joe, Danny, all of them, John Daly, everybody that is against us, I ask you to touch each and every one of those people, and I ask you to bless them as well, but I ask you to prick their hearts and get them to change their minds about their thinking and all the things that they're doing. But I also believe that there's, um, you are the, the one that takes things that look terrible and turn them into something that looks wonderful, and I trust you. And I know that you have this. I have the fog on me, the favor of God. And I have had the fog on me a long time. You have favored me so many times. And I just praise you for that today. And I know that you have it. And I know that the outcome will be a plus. Your will be done, though, not my will. I don't want it to be something that is for me. I want, guys, let me tell y'all something while I'm praying right here. Is in order to need a miracle, or in order to get a miracle, you have to need a miracle. And so we're at a point where we need the Lord to step in and do something miraculous. And I'm thanking him for it right now. And, and I know that you can do miracles and I trust you. So I'm not even worried about this anymore. I'll be honest and thank you, Lord, for blessing all my friends. And I thank you for that today in Jesus' name. So I'll be honest, friends. I was nervous at many times. in the Early on, I was mad. Um, and, but now I'm not, I'm not mad. Now I'm thankful. And what I mean by that is I know that God has a plan. This is, that's not a maybe God has a plan. He didn't get me to go there and build this thing for it to be just snatched away. There's something bigger going on here. And by the way, I have Elvis episodes on Clicks TV, so if y'all get a chance to go over to clickstv.com, you will find Elvis episodes over there with me and Trey in them. And we're working on a thing that we're doing together for Clicks TV. And uh, also, we're going to be doing a, uh, we're starting a podcast that Trey and I will be uh, doing together, which is going to be called Wishing Cotton Was a Monkey. And I won't explain that now. I'll let y'all ponder that for just a little bit. Um, but that's what it's going to be called. So we're working on the things that we need to get all that done. And, um, and, and, I, and a lot of you are telling me that you're praying for me and Trey. And thank you all for praying for me and Trey. Yeah, uh, we, I can feel it. I know that you are. But just know 
that the Lord is going to show out on this thing. I promise you, you're going to see things that just go, what? And it's actually CLIXTV.com. ClixTV.com. And that uh -huh. is a channel. It's actually Priscilla's brother uh, that signed me up to this deal. Um, and we've never really announced it. I, I guess I've mentioned it maybe in a video or two. But, You're announcing it right now. But I'm announcing it now that there there are Elvis videos. Y'all have seen the videos. All it is is the videos I've already done, but they're going to be on a different platform. Um, and they're cutting them in different ways and doing different things with them the way that they want to 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 do them. I noticed I went to the website the other night and your uh, your video pops up on the header of their yes. website. They're their really uh, pushing it. And, and hello, Sweden, Frederick. Hello, Frederick. And uh, let's see, blessings from yours. You did the work from your heart. Thank you, Deborah. And Deborah, I'm I'm seeing your comments on there, and I hope you know that I'm I'm paying attention, and um and I appreciate your support on that. I really do, guys. Y'all have been so supportive, and that's the thing is, um, if you think about um this whole thing, it's it's like a lot of things that you see in the news. You hear this group that just seems to make so much noise, and you think, well, this group of people that's making so much noise has to be a giant group. Well, it turns out it's a very, very small group, and it's the same thing with haters. There's some haters out there, but it's just a tiny bit of haters. I read all the comments, and lately y'all have put so many comments that I haven't been able to read them all. I'm trying to go back when I have time and go back and read the things, but... Um, the main thing is, is I try to look at every comment and I'm going to say every 50th comment is a negative one. And it may not even be that many, maybe one in a hundred. So just know, but now I've blocked a lot of those people too. So that may be one of the reasons, but what has your experience been, Trey? Um, yeah, I appreciate everyone sending me messages, comments, asking about my camera. My camera was broken. Um, in the when it was ripped out of my hands or when it was thrown in a car, one of the two, but it was broken when it was taken out. Of the that was okay. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, so, but I really appreciate everyone sending me messages and telling me about how um, they're supporting myself and Billy, and uh, they're concerned about everything that's going on. Like that means a lot to, to us when I read, I'm reading this stuff, like even reading some of the stuff now that you guys, the, the chat's going so fast, so it's hard to, to see everything, but we'll be able to go back on here, Billy and I, and see what you guys write and stuff. But yeah, I, I'm telling you guys, like, I didn't even enjoy going to Elvis Week this year because I was, I, I just wasn't looking forward to it. Uh, I was concerned about it. <laughs> and I guess my... I was I had a right to be concerned because something did happen to me now. I <laughs> And I predicted it by the way. If you go back and watch that video, I tell you, I downloaded that video on the seventh before we ever went to Elvis Week. And what happened to us happened there in the video I say there's a high probability that something's gonna happen. Yeah, so and it did. And, and that's the thing is I've been going to Elvis Week ever since I became a fan of the guy and um, this Elvis Week I had no I I didn't even enjoy enjoy being in Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't even care. I didn't even care about it. And that's because of the last three months that I've been through, that the spa guy has been through. Yeah, clickstv.com, C-L-I-X-T-V.com, the spa guy, YouTube, Go Try to Trey, Elvis, and Elvis channel, clickstv.com. Somebody's yeah. trying to spell it a different way, so that's why um, I was. But what I was saying is I really Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, I am working on getting my camera fixed and stuff. A lot of people have asked me about that, but it was broken. Spa guy was standing right there when all this happened. And no matter what they want to say, or people want to say, it did happen. The police even uh, confirmed it with me. So there's a little information there. <laughs> uh, but the detective, I meant. And, uh, but anyway, um, I just, I didn't look forward to being in Elvis week. I didn't care about being in Memphis. And I didn't I, either. I, I do a video about this guy every week because I care about his story. And here I am, can't even, don't even feel like I can come 
to Memphis, Tennessee, and go to the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum and work for Elvis. I mean, that's I, I feel like I work for Elvis because I'm trying my best to bring interesting stories and put them together for people forever to be able to watch on this platform called YouTube. And um, But what I was getting to is I didn't care about being there, but the fans that went on Billy and I's three-hour tour, you guys got me excited as I was riding around Memphis, and I really uh, appreciate the people on those buses because it, it made me have a good time. It made it worth it. It did. Right. Yeah. If, if it was not for you guys and, and ladies that were in those buses, it would have been the worst Elvis week I'd ever experienced. It will be the worst one because I've never been assaulted before. But uh, uh, it, it would have been a, a lot worse if it was not for the fans that rode around Memphis for three, sometimes five hours with me and the spa guy because sometimes we go overtime, right, Billy? Well, we, we got, got excited. You, you know, when we're, our, our when we're putting our friends on our, on a, imagine this, um, you're putting friends on a bus, people that are interested in the same thing you're interested in, and you get to take them to all these places, man. There's nothing more exciting oh, than that. This, I wish did the bus this? was bigger. Did you read this? That this, this guy said, Glenn Pavin said, Elvis fans matter just literally posted on Facebook update a few minutes ago and are accusing both of me and you of trying to give Billy Smith a heart attack. How in I mean, the world are we trying Smith. to give Billy Smith a heart attack? I love Billy. I love Joe. I thought yeah. they were my friends. You know, I mean, I promoted Billy and Joe left and right. Go go back to the first episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Episode number one and go to the very end of the episode and see who I talked about. I talked about three people. I talked about this guy right here, Spa Guy. I talked about Ashley, and I talked about Billy and Joe, MMK. That was when they were all together. That's, and you can see that. That's a fact. After but episode. but let me say this. Um, guys, I'm sure I was here. Was it 10 minutes ago that I was praying for him? Yeah. I'm yeah, sure that I did. But that, yeah. that just goes to show you, like, your whole problem is, Billy, these people don't watch our shows. They don't understand. You, you, you've told me that a lot, that th they don't understand what we do. They, they don't understand what they're we do. They're listening to other people most. tell them what we do, and that's yeah. the problem. And, and I can tell you the person that's probably telling them. They're, a, you know, a fake person and a liar. Yeah. Well, and, that's one uh, of them. Yeah, you're talking about the guy that has, there's a guy out there that bought Wonder Woman's airplane. Some of y'all get that. Um, but let me say, a guy a minute ago, a, a little bit ago, said Asheville. And I'm guessing that you live in Asheville. I go to, uh, you know, I'm from North Carolina, so we pass through Asheville uh, not so much anymore, but for years we did. And I have filmed in Asheville. I have not put the Asheville stuff out yet because I have three more interviews to get. But I've got some killer stuff in Asheville. The lady that was the manager of the motel there, I've interviewed her. She has copies of canceled checks and different things that are just going to blow your mind. And I've got all that. That's that's things that we have. We're just not we're just not done. Um, you know, I, I need I want all the pieces of it before I tell the story. Yeah. But if the if they're saying that that we're trying to give Billy Smith a heart attack. If something happened to Billy or Joe Smith or Joey or Danny or their wives or Patrick or anyone, I would be heartbroken. We love these people. Um, that doesn't make what they've done right, but we do love these people. And as I mentioned, pray for those people. You know, the Bible says to pray for your enemies. And it's not necessarily that I think that they're enemies. I just think what Trey was just saying, I think they're misguided. I think they're lit. People are giving them a revised version. Y'all know the whole story where you get in a classroom of 30 kids and you tell the first kid something, and by the time it gets around, it's something completely different than, uh, than what the, the first person was told. And I think that's what we're running into. These people uh, are not actually sitting down and watching the videos and taking the time to learn what we do and what we say. They're having other people that don't want basically those people are the people that are hurting them because they're pitting them against us exactly and that's which is is crazy that's not um and nathaniel i'm from eastern north carolina way past hickory uh but i've sold hot tubs in hickory north carolina 
Um, but I'm uh, in, from a little town called Kinston, which is eastern North Carolina. Hello, Tacoma, Washington. I've been out to Washington and worked on hot tubs, too. What's going on, Frank? Hey, Frank. Yeah, Frank's that uh, mafia guy in, in, um, in, in New York. Yeah. Real mafia. He's real mafia. But they, right. look, guys, we don't have any ill will uh, towards anyone. And, and we even tried to help by, I loaned them one of my cameras. Our cameras are uh, these little tiny bundles of, of joy, miracles. They look so good and so beautiful. Do you have your trade that you could show? I don't have one. I, don't I, have, I, have, I have some upstairs, but these little cameras are like, I, I don't even know how to say it. They just, the audio and video is just beautiful on them and they're tiny. They're just the right cameras for us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut in here and I don't know if I even should say this, Billy. Right. I'm gonna say it because it, just make, it makes me angry. If this stuff makes me angry, what you just brought out, brought up that you, you actually gave people a camera. Sony and X30 U camera. This guy, I'm gonna tell y'all, this guy has given people cameras, he has given people iPads, computers, and all these people and money, cash money. And I that's four people or yeah. To help people, these people. To this guy right here, the star guy, and all four of those people are enemies to him now. Like they're they're they they just it's just craziness. It, yeah. it's, I have never seen so Billy, don't give anybody else anything. Well, <laughs> yes, Deborah, that is near Rocky Mount. That's not far. And someone was saying Hendersonville, North Carolina. I actually filmed in Hendersonville, North Carolina. I think I put that video out, but maybe I haven't. I went downtown Hendersonville, and there was a little gas station that was, was the gas station turned into a, a restaurant? It was restored. I can't remember now, but I have filmed in Hendersonville. It's a beautiful little town. Seemed like they had a fountain and had a, uh, a turnabout there. From my memory, we were staying. We went to stay in Asheville um, with the girls, and they went shopping, and I went and filmed uh, around there. But some people, so let's let's get off the the subject of the things that have gone wrong. Let's talk about Elvis, guys. Yeah, uh, what do you think, Trey? Yeah, I want, uh, that's why we're here. Look, I do a video every Tuesday about Elvis Spy Guy every Monday, and I think you have Wednesday, Friday. Um, but let's talk and, about And I'm going to cut down for a time being to one Elvis video a week, and I've got a killer coming up tomorrow. Somebody said Trey. Okay. Trey and or, somebody's saying Jacksonville, Clayton, North Carolina. My father was born in Clayton, by the way. In Jacksonville, I used to play at the Tar Heel Opry House at least once a month on Friday and Saturday night in the band that I was a lead singer and a guitar player in a band, country band. And um, uh, I was Billy Ray Spa guy. And uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Billy Ray Spa guy. And Boyd Workman says he was on the tour. So you were there that afternoon, Boyd? Wow, oh, boy. Thank you, man. And, uh, I, and uh, man, we try on those tours. It is so much fun. Just imagine, guys. Like I say, having people that have that are like-minded with you. All of y'all are wanting the same thing, and you get to take them and show you the things that that they're interested in, that you're interested in, that you found. It's it's a lot of fun. Someone was saying the outskirts of New Orleans. Trey and I filmed in New Orleans just a few months ago, um, and I haven't put some of that New Orleans stuff out yet. Hey, Todd. You want to know the answer to that question, Todd? You know what you just asked me. All I'm going to say is this. Todd, you have to do the math. Oh. <laughs> do the math, math Todd. Got to figure it out. Um, uh, someone <laughs> is saying Clayton and down the road in Garner. Uh, I have family that lives around there. If you see Stallings uh, septic tanks in Porta Johns, that's my dad's brother, my Uncle Bobby. And my, my family in that area was in swimming pools, and then they got into septic tank manufacturing installation, the porta potty business. I have a cousin that owns Jim's, Jim's John's and, and in Greenville, North Carolina. And uh, so that, those parts of my family, and there's somebody from Hendersonville, Tennessee, which I'm in Hendersonville, Tennessee right now. T and Me TV. Hello, T and Me. 
You need to uh, to come uh, meet up sometime. I Did like you say that. an X32 camera? No, we use um, NX30 U. NX30 U's. It's yeah, HXR dash NX30 U's. And those cameras, you can buy them uh, now used for about $1,000. And uh, Wallace, North Carolina, I've got family in Wallace as well. And was born in Raleigh. Someone's saying they see Stallings, Porta Johns. Uh, he's got uh, a lot of uh, pump trucks and all that kind of stuff. There's someone from the Netherlands. I love the Netherlands. I got to spend a lot of time there. Uh, I stayed in, um, in what was the town that I was in? Uh, come on, Billy. Um, uh, where the compact disc is developed, uh, Phillips and all that kind of stuff. Uh, come on. Maybe it'll come to me in a minute. But I would take the train out of there, and I, I went all over. I went to Breda. I went to Rotterdam, which is where the colonel left on the cruise ship to come to America twice, by the way. Um and uh, the hearse, Elvis's hearse burned in Georgia, right on the Florida Georgia line. Good night, Patrick. I know you're, uh, Patrick Lissom is a friend of mine in the Netherlands. He took me to uh, interview a guy that was fascinating, that was friends with the Colonel's family. Thank you so much, Eindhoven. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> he just helped me. The name of the town I was in was Eindhoven. And I stayed at a little uh, hotel that I could see the train station from my hotel. And I rented an electric bike. And yes, I was born in Raleigh, um, 1965. I lived at 600 Frank Street in Raleigh. Um, and um, But in Eindhoven, I, I rented an electric bicycle. And man, I rode that bicycle. And you could take the bike on the train and take it to the next town and take it off and ride the bike in that town. It was I will say that I had as much fun in in the Netherlands as I've had anywhere. There's bike paths everywhere. It's safe to ride. You don't have to ride in the street like they do here, and it's it's really cool. And I see Kenneth is in Chattanooga. That's a beautiful town. Uh, we love to go there. We did go to Hell's Kitchen in Vegas. That was a good place. Either. Yeah, we sure did. And uh, I'm seeing someone asking about Al Strada. Al Strada is a tough nut to crack, y'all. Uh, I've tried and tried and tried. He's moved to Alaska. We're trying. Uh, we're, we're still trying because he, uh, Rex Hospital, the old one, uh, not the current one, but the old location. It's actually in my video and I got it wrong. I thought the location where it's at now was the original Rex, but it turns out it wasn't. Um... What are some bucket list locations for us to film? Susie Drew asked that. Um, what do you think, Billy? Oh, Hawaii, of course. Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden, which she can help us with. I have someone that's already got us in Madison Square Garden. We just got to go. Yeah. I want to stand inside. I want to go right in the middle of Madison Square Garden so I can, you know, I can talk about all the history that happened right here once upon a time. It's a lot of cool history. She's asking, uh, Sandra's asking about video in Knoxville and Johnson City. I've done both of those there on the channel. Uh, both of those Elvis wise. I've even filmed, I filmed a lot of stuff in Knoxville because my daughter lives there. So I've well, filmed yeah. a ton of stuff. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Al Strada sounds like a dessert. I guess probably Elvis would have said the same thing. All right, Billy. I hate to do this to you, but I got to get off here. You got to go? Yeah, but I, I want to. We're going to come back. We need to start doing this. Yeah, this we do. And, but, guys, I just want to say this. i got to run. i got to do some things here. It's 6 o'clock here. But um, I really appreciate all the comments that y'all have left for me and your concerns, like I said. And I, when I read these messages, it makes me feel good. It, it's bringing how I was a fan of Elvis back to me. Because I'm serious, guys. This last three months have made me question, do I want to continue spending hours of my time I mean, I do a lot of different stuff that y'all don't know about. Do I want to continue spending all these hours of my time to bring stories about this guy's life when I'm, I'm, I'm being treated by his family members a certain way and by other people, in my opinion, for no reason? And yep. it's my big question if I, if, if I even have the – I'm a type of a, a guy that has to have passion – and enjoy what I do, and if I do, I do a really good job at it. If I don't care, I won't do any, do it, do anything. And I, I, I'll tell y'all, I've really been questioning that spot guy. But 
your comments, the three hour tour bus tours have brought that back to me. So I appreciate you guys for that. I've got to go, got to go take care of business. TCB on the Lisa Marie as GK to Jicker and a speaker. That was my friend that I miss. GK used to say, my man, Trey, how you doing? I remember GK saying that, but, uh, I want to do this again, spa guy. Yeah, we need to. I just, I want to make sure that this is not clunky. We'll have to look back at it. And I mean, from my side, it looks okay. I just hope out there that it, that it, that it did okay. I want to make sure the sound was good and all, all right, that kind of stuff. We'll all see. Right, Billy, I'll talk to you later. All man. right, buddy. You can see me in here. Y'all ask him some good questions and I will be back, guys. This Tuesday, pretty cool episode coming up, up on Globe Trading with Trade. Yeah. Don't, don't dribble. Go subscribe to me if you haven't. And I'm going to hang on for about another 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to get out of I here. think I, I can. We'll see when he gonna, when he rolls. All right. I'll see you, Billy. All right. Well, thank you. Hey, and take up for this guy. This guy right here is a real man, and that's why I'm standing beside him because he's right, and he does right. He doesn't do wrong. This it's, dude, it's important. This far guy's the man. All right. Mika said that it was good, so let's see. So let me see if I can flip my audio, my, my window capture. Let's see here. So him being off of there, uh, I may not be able to, to get this to go. Let's see. All right, can y'all see that? Does that work? So can you see it now? So do you still have audio? Is everything good? Can you hear me? Okay, so I think I'm back up. Thank y'all. Okay, so I'll answer a few questions. I'm not going to stay on a whole long time. I've got to go finish my video for tomorrow. But guys, I got a killer for tomorrow. Um, something that I think is, is very interesting. And um, it's a sad story, but it's also a great, a great Elvis story. So the guitars are now right-handed. So I think when we did that, it flipped them around what you were looking at. And uh, so any questions that y'all have, just let me know. And we've already talked enough about what's going on with the dojo. Let's do something else. Let's talk about Elvis or something that you're interested in. Hello, uh, Australia. Isn't it amazing, guys, that we can talk to people around the world? That just blows my mind. Uh, Roberta Morris, the lady that sued Elvis in the 50s, if you're talking about the one, um, Robbie, she's dead, sadly. She died in California. My favorite book on Elvis would be Peter Gorelnik, of course, Last Train to Memphis. Um, I think it's not 100% perfect, but none of them are. It's not possible. Um, but um, it's the, especially the first one is pretty well done. And Barb is saying she would like to see some videos with Stan. I have filmed, I've got hours with Stan that I haven't edited out, um, but I will in the future and put those out. Stan is, is a great friend and wow, very, very knowledgeable. The second Peter Grelnick book I don't think is as accurate as the first, but both of them are still very well done and both of them still give you a a real deep look at the Elvis story, as it were. He really did a great job on that. Am I planning on coming to the next birthday? Yes, we plan on being at every one of them. Just this year, guys, we had, an, uh, because of the attack happening, um, my wife asked me not to go to uh, to Candlelight, and 
because of that, I did not go. Um, because we thought that they, I mean, I won't go any further than that. Let's let's just let's just move on from that. Yes, we're planning on doing bus tours no matter what happens every January and every August. Um, the Aloha concert, of course, would be my very favorite. That was my first thing. And the ambulance is safe until I can figure out. And I've got other opportunities that have actually come up. I've got another museum that has talked to me about doing some stuff with them, actually running their museum. Um, <clears throat> I've got another guy that has a very uh, well-known YouTube channel that had a museum in Los Angeles. And uh, we've got some people talking about us uh, maybe put, pulling our resources together and doing something. Um, Alicia Kerwin, I have worked on, I have filmed everything that I could find with Alicia Cur Kerwin has been filmed, but I just don't think it's enough to tell the story. And Frank wanted to know if I will write a book. Probably, yes, I will. Um, Someone was to invite me to the varsity. I've heard of that. Uh, come to Atlanta. I need to go. Uh, I've got somebody that I need to go interview that lives close to Atlanta. Do I think they should officially release footage? That's, I mean, I think they should release everything. Um, but that's. Yeah, Scott Michael and Scott Michaels and Jordan, you you've got it, boy. You people know some stuff. Um, I do not think that Parker was a bad guy. No, um, I think Parker. You know, nobody bats a thousand. Uh, it's not possible. Um, I think Parker was a genius at what he did, and clearly, here we are, forty-five years after Elvis has passed away, and we're still talking about uh, Elvis, and we're still talking about Parker as far as that goes. So he. He made Elvis and himself very, 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 very famous. Now, it was a perfect storm. Uh, that doesn't mean that someone else couldn't have done the same thing. I just don't think other people had the ability at the moment um, to, to do what the, the colonel... The colonel had the infrastructure to create that. And I'm sorry, these things are going by so fast, I'm trying to answer them. Someone wanted me to recap my uh, how I knew Scotty Moore. So what happened with Scotty is um, I was driving back. I had been in Memphis with my sister and her husband. And somebody told me that you could stop at Scotty Moore's tape duplication shop in, in Nashville, which is right off of I-40. It was very, very close uh, off of DeMombre. And um, the name of the street is one street over. And the name of that street is escaping me for some reason. Um, uh, but anyway, I went to Scotty's Tape Duplication Shop on the way home back to North Carolina. And I drove through Memphis or Nashville, stopped. And they had, they had Scotty and Elvis a photograph. And you could get them autographed for five bucks. And I asked her, I said, well, she said, well, Scotty's not here, but I can get him to autograph and I'll mail it to you. And I was like, okay. So she mailed it to me. And... I think that that was, I'm going to say that that was 1998 or 97. Well, 98 was when eBay started. 99, I start. I got to thinking about that. And I called him and said, hey, you know, I think I could sell these autographed Scotty Moore photos on eBay. How many can I buy? And I actually had Scotty Moore call me at my house when I lived in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I fangirled him, which was embarrassing to him. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I couldn't believe Scotty Moore called my house. It was just unbelievable to me. But anyway, fast forward, I moved to Nashville. I hooked back up with Scotty. I wanted it to be where I could get personalized signatures where I could say, I want this one to say to Mika, best wishes Scotty Moore. I want this one to say to Scott. So I, I did that. I would go to Scotty's house and sit in front of him and say, this picture, I need to say this. This picture, I need to say this. I want, they want to buy this, but you, they want you to autograph this. They want you to do this. They want you to do that. And so I did that for several years. My stack of papers 
I wrote out a piece of paper for every single thing that somebody that I sold. And my stack of papers is about that deep of everything that I sold Scotty wise. And you're right. Uh, he was a businessman, Gary, there's Scotty Moore autographs out there floating around, but sadly he, um, he passed away, my friend, so there are no more. And I don't have any. I've got my personal ones, but I'm not going to sell them. Um, it says, he too, as a person, he may have overcharged Elvis, but without the movies, I wonder if he would be as popular. I just think that the colonel did all the right things. McGavick Street, thank you, Rob, uh, Robbie. I knew somebody would, would know. And, uh, but Scotty's tape duplication shop was on McGavick, which is one street off of, uh, DeMombrian. And, <clears throat> um, but anyway, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Colonel. I believe no Colonel, no Elvis. And I sold stuff on eBay all over the world. I literally shipped stuff to Japan, all over the Europe, um, just basically all over the world. So if you see a Scotty Moore autograph, and I don't have them with me, but if it has a certificate of authenticity with it, it'll say J C O L on it. It'll be it'll be a it'll be on uh, like a tan paper, real thick paper cardstock, and it'll have a blue ribbon that says J C O L on it, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. At the bottom, I sign it. His girlfriend, Gail Pollock, signs it to say that we witnessed it being signed. If you see an autograph with that, I promise you that Scotty Moore signed it. I did not send a, a certificate of authenticity out at any moment that I did not personally see him sign once I moved to Nashville. Now, the earlier ones were him just signing it and I was shipping those. But once I could... um, Once I could... Uh, get him to sign it and me witness it, he did that. Colonel Parker stopped Elvis from touring the world. Not factual at all. My question to you is, when was he going to do it? Was it between all of the sold out concerts? You know, it's funny. Um, the way I, I wasn't splitting profits with Scotty, the way I would do it was I would buy, like he would have a price for a a autograph photo and I would buy that photo who is the lady that made that video I have no idea who she is oh uh, I do not the dinner with dr. Nick's son did happen um every every well I will say this every event at the dojo that was set up to happen did happen uh, I made sure that the ones that I was responsible for happened. Patrick made sure that the ones he was responsible for happened. Sold out, baby. That's right. But what I was going to say is um, it's interesting to me that the same people that say that Elvis was overworked say that the colonel kept him from going to Europe. So, guys, you can't have it both ways. Uh, Gary Spring, yes, I have filmed things on Roy because he lived here in my town. Um, and, and I filmed all that stuff. I've just, I have the, ed I just got to edit it. Um, and I may get back to, um, I may get back to, um, doing some of those things more than what I'm saying is I may drop it to one Elvis thing a week and then something else like that a week. And somebody was asking me a question here. Is it true that the colonel was in this? Back when the colonel came here, it is not like it is now. You Basically, the immigration policy was open at the time. He could have easily come to this country and gotten paid. I mean, he went in the Army. That tells you how easy it was. He was in the Army, guys. He came here and was in the Army. He worked for a city. He was a dog catcher in a city. And I've done a lot of things ready, Teddy, on Johnny Cash, but most of those things you'll find over on my weekly Spy Guy channel. I have two channels that I put history stuff on. And Jerry Lawler, we talked to Jerry uh, recently. Trey and I both interviewed Jerry. And yeah, I, I think we can get Jerry to some, uh, to some events. He was very, very, uh, very nice. And uh, Carl Perkins' son, Stan, his interview was awesome. And I got, look, I take Stan to his father's grave 
to his father's house. We do all that. I haven't put any of that out yet. Um, and somebody's saying uh, Europe had no venues for big, big artists, only Wembley. And that is that is pretty factual. Now, he could have gone over there and played played 10 days in a row or something. But guys, by 19, the end of 1974, Elvis um, was not in good shape phys physically. So it would have been really, really, really hard on him to go do those things. Had to look, yeah, his, his name was, okay. So how do you pronounce that arms, armchair observer? Do you know how to pronounce that word, that name? His name was Andreas Cornelius Dries is, was his, Dries was like a nickname, Van Kalk is the way you pronounce the last name. And I have been to where um, he was born at. i show you the spot where the house where he was born at in Breda in the Netherlands. And um, the Colonel could have gotten his citizenship during World War II, that's factual. And plus, this colonel knew three presidents personally. He could have at any moment gotten a... So people that are saying that are just not factual. Uh, but it's it sounds good. And yes, glass half full, he could have gotten a passport very, very easily. And the other thing was, is he had a giant uh, group of people that did these things. He didn't even necessarily have to go. He had a staff of people. In fact, the video tomorrow, somebody was asking for a clue, is someone that was on the colonel's staff that I bet a lot of you don't even know who it is. And it's a fascinating story, but it's a tragic story at the same time. And Elvis couldn't take his guns out of the country. That would probably be factual but I mean if the guns are on the airplane and you land the airplane I don't think they're going to come on the plane and take them um but you know I guys and Danny you you're saying you want to give us kudos for not backing down I will tell you this I'll promise you this I will never ever for relationship lie to you and what I mean is, there's people that wanted me to just say, well, that this movie happened somewhere that it didn't happen at, just so to go along to get along. That will never happen. I'm not going to do that. That's not a thing. Uh, not for me, it's not. Now, some people may do that. And uh, and I'm, I'm proud of the Colonel, too, uh, Bert. And uh, my friend that Patrick that left a while ago, Patrick Van Lissom, took me to meet was actually trying to get a road named after, or a street named after the colonel in Breda. And he may be successful now because of the movie, um, but I don't think so. And Blake, Elvis did not want to do A Star is Born. And no, this video tomorrow is not on Tom Diskin or on... Uh, um, uh, Charles Stone. But those are great guesses. Not on Jeff Davidson. I have already filmed at Trinity Music City many, many times. You'll find that on the other channel. Conway Twitty's house and all that kind of stuff. So if you go over to the Weekly Spa Guy, you'll find, um, you'll find those things. You're right, Mika. I don't have any quit in me. I don't know the name of that word. That is that is not in my DNA. In fact, if you challenge me, that's the wrong thing to do. Unless you want a reaction. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. The last El movie Elvis saw, we, we had a great time um, uh, doing that event. And what he's talking about is the very last movie that Elvis saw was The Spy Who Loved Me, a James Bond movie. And he saw it at the Southbrook 4 Theater, which is just south of, of Memphis. If you ever watched the video that I did where Elvis went to the, um, went to the pet shop and bought all the dogs, 
it's directly across the street, the movie theater, and it's kind of hidden. The marquee's gone out on the street now, so unless you knew there was a movie theater in the building, you would never even know. And I think that's why Elvis liked to go there, because once those door closed, you couldn't see him anymore. He was inside, and he didn't have to deal with people. Um... And Kelly's asking me if I have been able to regain entrance to the dojo. Um, I yes, but but I'll go back and say what I was saying earlier. I am keeping my nose one hundred percent completely clean. So when I walk in, there's a, a, a there's a, a defense, a legal defense called the clean hands defense. And y'all know that I talk about doing clean business. And um, the clean hands defense is the best way to go. Mick is telling me not to say anything. I guess that's what you mean. Uh, but anyway, um, an interview with one of the ambulance drivers. Sadly, both of those guys passed away. Charles Crosby passed away in 1981. And um, Ulysses Jones passed away. And I may be wrong about this. I think 2003. Long before I was making these videos. Um, and, you, and you're right, David. The way they painted the colonel in that thing is just absolutely completely wrong. They act like the colonel was was some bumbling idiot and the colonel was not a bumbling idiot at all. The colonel was a very, 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 very smart businessman. Um, and Bart, I think you're right. I think once he hit that plateau um, he kind of, it was like, I've been there, done that. It can't get bigger than this. And it all sadly went downhill from there. Um, Gary, I have not done anything on Buddy Holly, though I do plan on it. Other than uh, in the thing where we, I think Trey put it out, where we were, we had uh, Jimmy Snow at the dojo. Uh, if you watch the movie, you see Jimmy, he's Hank Snow's son, many times in the movie. And they portray him completely wrong. And he tells in that that he was he did not play a record for Elvis, um, and that's how the colonel heard heard about Elvis. None of that's true. But in that he talks about meeting a young man in um, in Texas. And guys, I'm tired, so I'm struggling with these names of these towns. Uh, what's the town that that he is um, famous for, Buddy Holly? Come on, Billy. Um, Anyway, whatever town that was, Elvis was playing there, and and Jimmy was playing there, and there was a young man that was a local that got to open up for them for that show, and he got to speak to him backstage, and he was talking to the young man, and he was telling him how much of an Elvis fan he was and that kind of stuff, and that young man was Buddy Holly, which is pretty crazy. That was before Buddy Holly was anything. So he was very, very much influenced by Elvis. Buddy Holly was. Lubbock. Thank you. Thank you. I knew y'all would, you would help me. So it was Lubbock, Texas. And you can find that on Trey's channel, Globetrotting with Trey. Uh, he filmed a lot of those excerpts of that and put together a really, really good video. Yes, Buddy Holly. I mean, I mean Billy Stanley is good. Yes, he's, he's good. Yeah. And I appreciate you guys um, uh, standing up for me uh, for this stuff. But look, just know that you, if you don't need a miracle, then there, God can't do miracles for people that don't need miracles. And um, so things had to go wrong in order for the Lord to be able to show off what he can do. Let's just say that. And he will. I promise you. We're going to look and see and say, look what the Lord has done. Um, was Priscilla accurately portrayed? That would be a negatory. 
And Elvis didn't, Priscilla and Elvis weren't standing out by an airplane. She left him and he got on the airplane and died the next day. That didn't, that didn't happen either. And I don't know who Gary Spring is, but clearly he's been, um, Gary, go find something else to do, buddy. You need to call your mama and, and get her to tell you that if you, you know, she, evidently she failed. If you don't have anything nice to say to shut your trap, call her. If you, if you don't want to, put, your, put her phone number up here and I'll call her and tell her she failed. I have not heard that armchair observer, but I would not doubt it because that's, guys, in, in 1977, it was not good. It was not good. Yeah, Vernon was not a drunk. And also, I'll tell you another thing that um, it, it's funny. Thank you, Mika. It's funny that they portrayed Gladys um, as drinking hard liquor, which Jimmy told me. Jimmy Snow said that the thing that struck him, he, he was there. By the way, Jimmy got, Snow got called to the ministry to be a preacher in January of 1958 at Graceland. And uh, he came down. He had just played the Lawrence Welk Show. And he was playing for 12,000 people at these concerts and stuff and doing very well. And the Lord called him to the ministry. And he walked downstairs and told Elvis that the Lord had called him to the ministry. And he um, um, was going to quit being a star and go into the ministry. And that's what he did. And Elvis told him that, that he was proud of him, that he wished him luck on that. And he went ahead. He's still preaching today, which is, which is pretty incredible. Uh, but Jimmy told me that the thing that struck him about Gladys was he came downstairs to get breakfast and she's drinking a beer. And he had never seen anybody drink a beer at um, that time of the morning. Um, another thing was Vernon was, you know, they made him out to be a, um, to be a, um, a drunk and, and kind of a bumbling idiot too. And I don't think that that was factual either. A lot of people don't know that Vernon had a used car lot. Um, uh, Presley Motors, Presley used cars. And uh, they use that still at over at the, uh, at the museum. And Yeah, Jimmy Rogers Snow. Okay, testimony. She's, she's showing you how to find that. Jimmy was incredible. And look, guys, let me tell you something that I got to do. And I can't tell you all the details, but this was a this is one of those banner days you hear me talk about. We have Jimmy Rogers Snow speak at the dojo. And we had church. And when I'm saying we had church, he, he was bringing the gospel and he was telling it like it was. And there was just, it was a special anointing. It was a special thing that happened. That night after that, he told me when I, when I first met Jimmy, we, we talked a lot. And he told me that his favorite movie was The Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston. Because he told me he'd seen it for 60 times. He saw, saw it every year at Christmas for 60 years. And I happen to know someone that owns The Ten Commandments that were a movie prop, that were from the movie. Um, and... So I thought, I've got Jimmy Rogers Snow. His favorite movie is, is The Ten Commandments. And I have a friend that has The Ten Commandments from the movie. And they're both in Memphis at the same time. So we got to make that happen. So after that, we went and I got to take Jimmy Rogers Snow and show him The Ten Commandments that Charlton Heston held for movie shots and promo shots. It was part of, it was one of the movie props for the movie, which was pretty, pretty darn uh, awesome. Oh, is, is Jordan the Lion here? Jordan, I, and let me, let me give Jordan the Lion a shout out. Oh, Ed King's Court. Hey, Ed. Um, Guys, Jordan the Lion is as fine a fella as I have ever met, and I mean that. Um, and I've never told Jordan this, but what some people have tried to do to me, calling and saying things to me about me to other people, I had someone do that to 
to Jordan, about Jordan. And I'm glad that I didn't listen because what that person told me about Jordan is absolutely a lie, just not factual at all. But somehow, some people do not like it when other people do well. My pastor talked about that at church today. Why? They said, he said, there's two different kinds of people. He said, there's people that are that root for you when you do well, and there's people that hate you when you do well. Guys, I'm the guy that roots for you. I want to be able to brag on my friends. Jordan Alliance videos are great. Jordan started after me um, and has far surpassed me with subscribers, but he works his butt off. And Jordan is a great friend. Ed over there at the... Um, Ed, I don't see you up here, buddy, but they're saying you're in here. Because I want to give you a shout out too. If y'all are not watching Ed's videos, King's Court, uh, John Kaufman, I don't, I don't see you, Ed, but I'm assuming you're in here. Uh, but Ed, the King's Court, if y'all not watching his videos, he does a great job as well. Uh, he is a, I, I count him a friend. Uh, him and his, and his uh, dad. I met them over at um, uh, yeah, we had a good Ric Flair last match too. Thank you so much for inviting me to that, uh, Jordan. That was that was fantastic, um, and that's not something I ever thought I would be at, but I'm glad I went. It was it was actually a lot of fun, and it was a something that was really really cool. And he's saying that Elvis would have been at Rick's last match. That's a good point. He sure would have. But make sure that you're supporting these guys, y'all. If you're supporting Jordan the Lion, he's worked hard for what he's got. Ed, he works hard. Ed does, uh, he's in kind of a different area than I'm in. I don't know anything about the records. Uh, he likes to do those kinds of things about details about records. and That's just not my forte. Um, someone's asking me if, if Bruce Springsteen actually jumped the fence. Alex, I can't say no, but I can't say yes. Someone is mentioning Elvis is the man. And look, I'm not going to put Elvis is the man down. What I will say is there's channels out there that steal Elvis's content. And they sit at home and they're not bringing anything new to the table. Um, those people I do not support. You know, Elvis's content is already out there. And if you're taking it and putting it on your channel, you are taking away from Elvis. In my, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, every now and again, I'll use a little tiny excerpt of something, but on videos, I try my best to get uh, permission on photos. Most of them are public uh, domain anyway, or you can't figure out who owns it. Um, but the the channels that are that are taking Elvis's footage and sticking it on their channel are um, for hits. I completely disagree with, and I am not for that. Um, yes, I'm friends with Schutz. Absolutely. Yeah, Stephen Schutz is a great guy as well. You know, uh, if you're looking to buy things, Stephen Schutz is a, uh, a trustworthy resource, in my opinion. Yes, of course I'm friends with Schutz. Schutz is, uh, Schutz is a good friend. And um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that Springsteen didn't did it, didn't didn't do it. I don't know. 
Yeah, and the other thing is, is, is you're right. They, they just, everything that, all they're doing, these channels are looking for things that get them hits. And what I mean is, I'm not interested in getting hits for a particular thing because you'll go, if you go back and look, I really don't do sensational videos. <clears throat> Every now I'll put something out <clears throat> and I have the luck of it being a sensational video. What I mean is, like that banner that I gave Shantae, I really do feel like that that banner was stolen from her at an Elvis concert. So I was able to use banner stolen at Elvis concert return, you know, that kind of thing. But I do not make, I don't intentionally make sensational videos. What I try to do is make videos that are factual, that help you to know who this person is, um, who this Elvis person is better. And what I mean by that is, we all know this, this icon, this guy that we see in a jumpsuit in all these photographs. I want to know who the real person was. If you take the concerts out, you take the music out, you take the movies out, who is this guy that had an entourage and dressed weird and shot TVs? And who is this person? And that's what I want to know. I'm trying to get closer to that. Um, <laughs> do a cl collab called Spa Days. I've been in, in uh, some of his videos and he's been in some of my videos. Uh, I consider uh, Jordan a very, very good friend. And he has been very supportive uh to me as a friend as well. And I, I value his counsel. I will say that. And Blake is saying he likes Elvis as the man. And look, I'm not down in what he does. I'm just, I don't like people taking long pieces of footage that don't belong to them. Excerpts is one thing, but when you go over to another channel and you pull a one hour video down, I'm not saying him. I'm saying that there's people that do that. Um, they'll go over and just take a, a video that's already on YouTube, rip it, put it on their channel. It's already on YouTube. Why? I mean, it doesn't belong to you, so why would you do it? And there's people out there that are doing those kinds of things. I have not talked to Patrick in a business standpoint since May the 3rd. Yeah, uh, Todd, I did a story about where Tom Petty saw Elvis in, that was in Ocala, Florida, right behind the bank in the alley on the right-hand side. June, I don't know about. We were down there to film with June with Ronnie McDowell uh, months ago, and she got COVID, and she was not able to... Um, um, we were not able to meet with her. Lieutenant Columbo, why does your channel have so many enemies? Your Columbo, I need you to tell me. Um, I don't know. Um, what I do know is that people, um, because I still own the dojo is the reason that I haven't taken my furniture out. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer. Let's just say that. I do not know what Memphis Mafia salary is. Blake, I'm, buddy, I'm not against Elvis is the man. I'm against people that steal Elvis's footage. Debbie Brown was an eyewitness. I think I know Debbie Brown, don't I? I think I do. It's not on Bonja, uh, Suzanne, but you're getting closer. I've heard two fifty or three hundred dollars a week is what I've heard uh, Memphis Mafia uh, money. Bob C. I don't know. Troy, Troy Cobb says he's got to go to church. I'm, please, uh, Troy, definitely don't let me keep you from going to church. Yeah, Ashley has a good Elvis channel too. I agree. Ashley, when she helped me, did a fantastic job. Very, very, very smart. 
I'm not aware of Kathy Tatum's Love Beads book. Okay, the Jungle Room furniture, I spent a lot of time finding it. I went and got the couch in Baltimore, Maryland. I went and got, uh, or I, another one of the chairs came from Memphis. Another chair in the ottoman and the two end tables came from Florida. They're just all over. Okay, boy, these things are going by fast. Will the ambulance be on display at some point? Absolutely it will. It, of course, depends on the outcome of what happens with the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum. But irregardless, it will, it will be somewhere. Absolutely. Do I think the Memphis Mafia used Elvis? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you could make, but the Memphis Mafia is a, is a large group, group of people. Um, so I think there was people in there that took advantage of the situation. Of course they did. Um, I could say this, if Elvis dealt with one one millionth of what the crazy I've had to deal with, I don't know how he survived as long as he did. And the, uh, the Memphis Funeral Home is the one that did the, the, the second burial. Yes, I touched base with Jerry um, when we were out in Los Angeles the last time, but the Elvis movie had just come out. It had only been out like two days, and he was, he was tied up. We were going to go film at his house, but as you can imagine, he was tied up with things uh, from the movie. He didn't say no, he just said bad time. I told him that we would probably come back out in September or October, and um, and he said that that was fine. Get him, get him at that time. Eric, well, I we'll have to talk about that at at some point. I would love to do an interview with Dolores Hart. Um, no, I believe that Elvis did pass on August 16th, 1977. I've, I've wanted to not believe it, <laughs> just like many of you, but after much, much investigation and much friendship with a lot of the people on the inside, I am convinced that, that Elvis passed away sadly that day. Night armchair, and I've got to go too, guys. It's almost 7 o'clock. I'm going to go shortly. Info about the bus tour. When it gets closer to that, we'll put the info. Um, uh, <laughs> kick rocks, D. If, I, if you were here, I would kick them at you. Um, info about the bus tour will be just stay tuned. Keep watching the videos. Once we get it figured out, once we get... What's going to happen at the dojo figured out? The, but let me say this. The bus tours had nothing to do with the Tiger Man Karate Dojo Museum. Um, I was using them as a fundraiser for the museum, but it's, those were me and Trey. They had nothing to do with the, uh, with the museum. And Jeffrey is saying he doesn't think that the amulets uh, belong, do, doesn't belong there. Well, I mean... If you're going to say that, then I don't, don't think Elvis should be buried in the backyard at Graceland. If you want to go there. But he is. And the ambulance, by the way, they didn't kill Elvis with the ambulance. They tried to save his life. It was a life vehicle. They were glad to have that at the time. When they called and the ambulance came and picked Elvis up and rushed him to the hospital, they were glad for it to be there. It's nothing but just part of the Elvis story. Nothing more, nothing less. If you love history, you got to love all history. You can't start pushing things out. And, and I'll give you some examples. One of the examples is um, the car that JFK was assassinated in. It's in the uh, Henry Ford Museum. You know, we could make a case that that's morbid, but it's not. It's part of the story. The rifle that, that MLK was shot with, I don't believe it is the rifle, but it's on display 
900 feet from where JFK was murdered at. Um, so, guys, it's about history. If you don't want to see something, close your eyes. It's like people saying that I have people popping on and going, well, um, I don't want to uh, uh, hear about this thing going on at the dojo. Well, don't watch the video. I'm, there's nobody at your house making you push play. Hey, Bert, I will. I definitely plan on coming back to the Netherlands. This time I'll bring Lori. I believe it's a piece of the puzzle too, Julia. And I'm glad to have found it. And I think it's uh, an interesting part of the story. And if you ever come to the museum, once we get things back together and you learn the whole story of that day, what happened, and all the different pieces of the puzzle, it's fascinating. Yeah, TVs with a gunshot in it. That's a good point. I don't believe this Larry Geller thing, guys. Go back and look at the photo of Elvis in the car at 12.30 that night, the morning of, of August 16th. His hair is not gray, guys. Um, so, if um, that's just what we call a clue. Who paid for the ambulance? I did. I own it outright. And, and another thing is some people like to bring up that I use the word in that move, in that show the, when I found the ambulance, the Holy Grail. And for me, it, it was the Holy Grail at the time, but there's others. And what I mean by that is, guys, I had been looking for that for years. And to actually see it, I had no idea I was going to see it that day. And did I say August the 17th? If I did... I meant August the 16th. I don't think I would have said that, but maybe I did. Um, yeah, Ronnie McDowell's a good friend, and, and I really enjoyed those videos with Ronnie as well. The casket did not have a fridge in it. All those things are made up, guys. Y'all, let me tell you things are made up. It was a wax dummy. It had a refrigerator in it. Elvis didn't cash the insurance policies. All those things are made up. Yes, the hearse caught on fire and burned to the ground. Now, there's another hearse, the one that took him from Baptist to Memphis Funeral Home is in North Carolina, and you might just see that soon. And yes, this will be a Netflix documentary. I will work towards that. And Eric, um, thank you, and I appreciate you guys coming on here and being supportive. It means a lot to us. Um, the casket, by the way, they're still out there. We're very, very, very expensive. If to buy that casket today, there's only a handful of them even still left. They're like in the $150,000 range. They're crazy expensive, but they're very exclusive and they don't make them anymore. Um, thank you, Michael, on the ambulance. And Daniel, we've already been to Michigan one time. You know, we went to Detroit and all that, but we need to come back. Um, absolutely. We need to do more of these. The, our big deal was, is how me and Trey were going to get on here together. And the other thing that we're going to start doing, I think the reason he didn't have a cat, a flag on his casket was it just happened too fast. Um, but Trey and I are getting ready to start a, um, podcast and, and I'll tell you the name of it again, wishing cotton was a monkey. And that will be the name of the podcast. Um, and uh, I'm trying to read this, guys, while I'm doing this and, and make sure that I'm staying on topic. But anyway, I've been on here for a while, so I need to go and I need to finish my video for tomorrow morning. Um You, thank you, Lynn. And Lynn, I appreciate your support. I, I don't tell you enough, and, and uh, you are very sweet. I really appreciate your note that you sent me. It, it was really, really nice. And look, guys, um, we're going to do our best to tell the truth 100% of the time. I don't have anything to hide. That's why you're seeing um, 
these videos that I put out, I'm I'm just turning the camera on telling you what happened. You know, to the best of my knowledge, it, I will never lie to you about anything. That is not something that is in my ability to do. And Jordan is saying that he's going to do a live stream shortly. So when I pop off of here, look, Jordan, if you want to start one, guys, go jump over there and talk to Jordan and support him. He's a great guy. Knows a lot about Elvis. Is a good friend. And um, somebody's saying that I should take the ambulance on the road. I have considered that. Also taking the ambulance to Europe. Um and doing, you know, having that and several other Elvis things like a mobile display. And you're asking about a schedule for these live streams. No, we didn't even tell anybody we were doing this particular live stream because, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure we could figure it out. Um, but we tried to figure it out. Um, and I'll be off in just a second, Jordan. So um, a lot of those guys going to jump over there, Todd and all those guys. Hey, Den, for you from Nashville and uh, y'all jump over there and and do that and guys we're doing our best to try to bring you some some killer stuff like I say I'm gonna back off just a little bit if y'all give me just a little time I'm gonna do at least one Elvis video every week but if y'all give me a little bit of a breather to kind of so that's not all I'm doing and uh, but I'll do Elvis stuff I've got a lot of stuff if y'all are not watching it on the end of the week, I may move it to Thursday, this video, but I've been doing a video from Europe, not Elvis related, it's just things from Europe. So it's very, I just find the, the difference in our culture is interesting and the things that they do over there. So I'm putting those videos out on the second channel, on the weekly Spy Guy channel. I put things out, or just things that are interesting to me, not Elvis related, just things that I see and I film. So make sure you go support those channels. Make sure you support Globetrotting with Trey. Jordan the Lion, uh, the King's Corner with, um, it's King's Court with Ed. Ed, I hope I got that right. Um, but go support all those guys. And Marie from Scotland, hello. Yes, I do karate, Blake. <coughs> yep. And, but also, I do gun as well. Um, and thank y'all so much. So I, I am going to pace myself, Todd. You know, I was putting out four videos every week, and it got to be just a little bit much. So I'm trying to back off um, and uh, try to make it where it's fun and, um, and not where I feel like I'm, you know, in a, in a corner, let's just say. Thank y'all so much for having my back. I really appreciate y'all. I love all y'all. And I'm going to pray for you as we go out. Lord, I ask you to touch my friends and put a hedge of protection around each and every one of them and bless them. Give them the blessings, Lord. Give them the desires of their heart. And the, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. And though he may fall, he shall not be utterly cast down because the Lord upholdeth him in the palm of his hand. And friends, you're in the palm of God's hand, and I praise him for that today. Bless my friends, Lord. I thank you, Jesus.